938. Oh, I don't know. I was almost getting ready to doze a few minutes ago, and uh, I said, Lord, special strength, special strength. <laughs> First Kings 17. We want to go to First Kings um, 17, and then we want to go to um, St. Luke chapter number 5. We're going to be uh, looking in those scriptures on tonight and just sharing some things, because I, I, I sense um, many of you are in the place of some kind of transition in your life. You know, I don't want to, you know, we, we, we kind of throw around buzzwords in the body of Christ, and we really don't give great definition to these words. We just use them because it's the hip thing to do, you know, transition. So we use these words without really understanding what a transition is. And that you should not be in transition forever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we've got to be careful. You know, I, I love corporate words, but we've got to be careful when we're receiving all these corporate words from we're receiving corporate word but we're not receiving individual word because corporate word never eradicates you from fulfilling the personal word that God has spoken to you and sometimes we get caught up in listening to person to corporate words and with this prophecy with this prophecy with this prophecy this prophet said this, this prophet said this. Um, until if you're not careful, the spirit of disappointment will come on you. Because you listen to all these people and what they're saying. And sometimes these folks been saying the same thing over and over again. You just ain't been listening. <laughs> So, so we've, 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 we've got to become a people that when we receive the word of the Lord, that we learn to be stewards, good stewards of the word. So let's look at this, First Samuel, First King 17, verse 7. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Who did the word come to? To the prophet Elisha. It didn't come to everybody. It came to him. <laughs> right. It was a personal word. And I'm going to say it again so we can get it in our spirits. There's a corporate word over the body of Christ. But it never eradicates you from personal words that the Lord gave you that you need to do. But they said this, they said this, this is here, so this is here, so this is here, so. But what are you doing in your own life? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. See, the word of the Lord does not come to pass just because it's spoken. <laughs> I'll say that again. The word of the Lord does not just come to pass just because it's spoken. 
the word of the Lord comes to pass when we learn to partner, when we learn how to partner in obedience to God. We're going to see this in this text tonight. I don't want to move too fast, but, I, but we're going to look at some things in, in these texts tonight, what we're reading. I'm just going through them for you for a minute. Verse number nine says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying. So when the word of the Lord comes, it's saying. The word of the Lord is not coming thinking. It's coming saying, and it's saying, so you can listen. <clears throat> Arise, go to Zarephath, what belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a woman, well, a widow, there to provide for you. Go to St. Luke chapter number 5. Uh, I really want us to look at something because we need to know this is a season that God wants us to grow. Did, did you hear that? Um, I, I said this is a season God wants you to grow. Amen. This is a season God wants you to grow. Because Egypt land is over. The wilderness time is over. It's time for you to walk in prophetic fulfillment yes. of what God has promised concerning your life. Amen. Now let's look at this in first. In Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter number 5, glory to God. Luke 5, hallelujah. Okay. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. And let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Isn't it very interesting? Jesus says, let down your nets. Simon just let down a net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. They began to sink. Amen. So here, that's what we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to start a series tonight. And the series is living this supernatural kind of life. And here I've got a subtopic. Overcoming dry season. Overcoming dry seasons. So let let let's let's look at some things, um, some 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 truths tonight uh, about the supernatural. Um, the supernatural never violates the principles and order of God. 
The supernatural never violates the principles in order of God. God honors his word. And he's not going to do anything outside of his word for the gratification of your flesh. Many of times we want God to, to break his laws to bring your manifestation to pass. He does not do that. Just like at the airport, you if, if you go to the airport and fly, you have to go to TSA. You have to go through TSA. You cannot by bypass TSA even the workers have to go through TSA. Because if you go through if, if you don't go through TSA and you get behind where the gates are, they are going to empty out the airport. Because you broke a law. So, because you broke the law, you, you done cause everybody's flight is going to be late because they're going to empty out the airport completely. And I've been in one years ago where they emptied out the airport because somebody. They saw something that looked suspicious, and they emptied out the whole airport. Wow. I was supposed to be going at ten o'clock. I did not ten o'clock in the morning. I did not leave till after two thirty. It's all on CNN that they, that was just right after nine eleven. So we need to know that God honors his word. God honors his word. Number two, we need to, to understand. Um, you must sow your spiritual ears of understanding in order to reap the tangibility of the manifestation of the promise. I'll say that again. You must sow your spiritual ears ears of understanding in order to reap the tangibility of the manifestation of the promise. What God said, and we said it and I'll say it again, it's not coming to pass just because he said it. There's a lot of stuff he has said over a person's life but it has not come to pass because many of times we've broken laws, principles, and order in the kingdom of God. It's quiet in here. Don't get quiet. And we have to deal with those things. when we break laws, spiritual laws. I, I, I will say this because the Lord was speaking to me just today. It's not the big things that are keep you out of the promised land. It's the small things that are keep you out. Huh? I mean, you all say, I ain't a daughter, I ain't a fornicator. But there's things in you, the little foxes you don't pay attention to, that'll keep you away from prophetic fulfillment in your life.
It's your, it could be your attitude. Amen. I was somewhere yesterday. There was there, there was a a, 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 a a young lady, and she was I guess she was having a moment, you know. And so she was, you know, she was cussing, and she was she was mad. I said, "Well, Lord, I'm 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 going to pray for. Her. I'm going to go home and pray for." Her. I said, Lord, just touch her, heal her, heal her in her heart, and it's just the stuff that she's walked through. And Lord, and I, and I was able to run into her today, and she says, uh, "I apologize for cussing yesterday." I didn't, I didn't. I didn't have to go get no oil. I didn't have to go in three days of prayer. I let her curse. I let her do all that. I said, "Well, Lord, I'm going to go home and pray for her because she needs prayer." And so we need to understand what God is saying and listen to what God is saying. So many of us, we spend more time celebrating what God said than doing what he said. Elijah by the word by, by the word of his mouth called a drought upon the land. God speaks a word to him and say get to the place called Cherub and there I will cause the ravens to feed you there. So if there, there's a place called there in God, God does not provide for you everywhere. He only provides for you where he sends you. Anything out of his provision in the place that he called you, you better pray for mercy. That's why it's, a, that's important that we hear God, that we go where he tells us to go. Huh? And I'm for, I'm for, for declaring, I'm for declaring and decreeing, but I think we've even went overboard with that too. Because cause more the most of what we're decreeing and declaring is about us anyway. Right. Yeah. 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 And we don't never come into maturity with decreeing and declaring and realizing that we get, need to be delivered from what the Bible says, the lover of self. Mm -hmm. Even God's been dealing with me about your prayer time. The prayer, your prayer time should not be 45 minutes of calling money for. <laughs> because when I read this, Elijah did not have to call for the ravens to bless him. Mm -hmm. They were already in place to bless him because the word went before him. Amen. Well, that's what the preceding word is. The preceding word, uh, uh, what the Bible talks about in Deuteronomy chapter number 8 in, 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 in Matthew 4 and Luke 4, uh, uh, the preceding word is that word that goes before you. So the, the preceding work was already before Elijah. He had to just get to the place where the word was going to be performed. Not one in that scripture do you see him, 
getting up in the morning and saying, Lord, I call for the ravens. The Lord told me this morning, and I was, you know, this afternoon he told me. He says, too many of my people want provision, but they don't want to mature. And the intent of God is that we graduate out of just praying for provision and realize my provisions have already been made. But you got to obey. You got to listen to God. Well, we spend more time praying, do, doing these two things, rebuking everything, and, and, and begging God like James Brown, please, please. <laughs> You got to be careful what you rebuke, because what you are sometimes what you're rebuking many of times it's the hand of God working. It's the process of God, and you're rebuking you're rebuking God, and He's sitting back on His throne like, wow. That's not a demon against your money. You spent it. <laughs> we live in a time now we put a spirit on everything. Everything is a spirit. Everybody got spirits. Spirit, 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 spirit. If it don't go your way, it's a spirit. It ain't go your way because it's not the will of God for your life. That's why you got to be careful. First Corinthians talks about many kinds of voices. So I don't, I don't, I don't go to everybody's conference. Did that years ago, and I graduated out of that. God put a stop to that. He said, "You're gonna go stop going to everybody's conference." I let you do that for some seasons, and then, then I gotta steal you away because I don't want you to be. You have too much. You you have too many folk up in you. And when it's time for me to speak, you got all these folk you done, you'd have been in this conference, that conference. And they done told you this, you done heard this at this conference, and this conference, or that conference. And then you confused because this one said this, and that one said this down the street, and then this one is saying this. So then I got to pull you away to myself so you can hear me, so you can be my voice. And when you're the Lord's voice, the folk ain't going to like everything you say. You're going to say some things that's going to challenge people. You're going to say something that's going to get some people upset because they want us, they want to eat from. From, from from the table of idols and liars and deceivers. So, so God sends him to a place called Cherub. The word Cherub means a place of covenant. God sends him to a place of covenant. And there, the ravens were to feed him. Uh, 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 um, uh, go, go, go there. 
for, for, for First Kings. Because God wants to graduate us. Because so many of us want the bread of God, but we don't want the will of God. We just want the part, give me this day, give us this day our daily bread. That's all you want. You know, Lord, I, 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 this is why you got to be careful. That's why you got to be careful all these prophecies that focus telling you, all right, Lord, say, da, 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 da. you won't come out. And God say, no, you got to stay in. Because I'm not done with you yet. That There's still a little bit more of you. I got to get out of you. You done went to somewhere and they say, oh, I hear the Lord say, you coming out. Well, just like, just like over in Jeremiah, how the prophet, you know, the prophet said, oh, no, you coming out. God said, not till after 70 years. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. You got to be careful of those, those, those voices. And you got to say, Lord, I thank you for sending the right voices in my life. Some of you in here are parents, and you know that there were times you had to bring correction to your children. Huh? And you had to tell them, no, that, that's not right. But we don't think that in the kingdom of God. Someone come up and tell us, the Lord said, this season I'm correcting my body. We sit back and say, no, Lord, you ain't said that. That don't agree with my spirit. Right. <laughs> But the moment he say, oh, I'm opening up the windows of heaven and I'm pouring you out a blessing that there'll be no room enough to contain it. And, oh, you're going to be so loaded. You're going to have so much money that they're going to be coming to you. And, and you're going to be loaded in money. You, uh, you're going to go home and you're going to stand in your yard. There's going to be money in the yard. There's going to be money in your car. It's going to be money on the first floor and money on the second floor. Woo, 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 woo. That's God. So if we're going to move in the, in the supernatural realm of God, look, look, look what was the assignment of, uh, of these ravens to the prophet. So watch this. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and did. The Lord wasn't going to do it for him. And there, and, 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 and Cherith, he, he had to partner with the Lord. Amazing how many of us are sitting, sitting in, the, in the spiritual lazy, lazy boy chair. And every day, well, well, what are you doing? I'm just sitting here believing God. Any day now. I know some people I've been... I, I, I've been knowing for years, and you call them, and they're still in the same place. And they're still talking about what they're getting ready to do. And someone I know of personally, they've been talking the same talk 20 years, and they're still in the same place. There's something you have to do. And what do you have to do? You have to do what God told you to do. You can't put your obedience off on God. The man at the pool of Bethesda. Now, the Bible did not say he was there 38 years. It say, it say he was sick 38 years. Amen. Amen. But, but, but I can tell you, one thing that we know, Jesus said he had been sick there. He had been there sick a long time. Was it the will of the Lord to heal him? Yes. 
What does he tell him? Get up, pick up your bed and walk. Now, he could have said, I'm going to take up your bed myself and you get up and walk. But no, he gave the man the challenge. Arise, take up your bed and walk. If he never did what Jesus told him to do, he would have still been at the pool. Talking about one of these old days. And then, and then you, know what, the, the, you know what we do? We, we, we spiritualize our laziness. Well, the Lord's going to do it. I'm believing God. There's people, you know, that that contact me for prayer on Facebook. And some of them you just have to say, what are we praying about that? What are we praying about God giving you wisdom? The Bible already told you how to get wisdom. What are we, what are we praying that for? Prayer, get wisdom. Well, let's go to the word. The word says, if any man lack wisdom, It didn't say you asked for them. It said they have to ask for themselves. That's what the word ask in the original Greek literally means is ask for yourself wisdom. I'm not going to waste my time with, <laughs> with, with just, we, we, we did that a long time ago when we didn't know better. We just pray for everybody. Then some folk God say, don't pray for. Amen. Well, I'll go out there even deeper. Some folk even God say, don't take their offering. Amen. But Lord, I need it, so. <laughs> I'm hungry. So, right, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's about Jesus, and when we read about his ministry, how many walked away from him. Yes. He let them go on, and he never told them, uh, "Why y'all leaving? <laughs> Make sure you support my ministry." I still be taking offerings during the during, during, during my time on earth. He said, "Let him go." That then he told told the, the the twelve that was with him that remained. He said, "You want to go too?" Right. That's right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now most folks ain't trying to say that. Your provision is guaranteed only in the place God sends you. And provision is greater than money. Say that again. Provision is greater than money. God, God's trying to enlarge your mind. Amen. I'll say it again. God's trying to enlarge the body of Christ's mind. Because all we think about with provision is money. And then when we deal with when God, what God, God only gives you on the level that you can receive. So he's not going to give you $100,000. if it, That may not be what God has for you. Don't mean you're going to be poor. Don't mean you're going to be poverty, in poverty. But I mean, that's just not something you need to sit and ask God, God, what do you have for my life? That's right. yeah, that's right. We depend on the prophet to tell us what God's. 
But, but, but you got access now. You can go to God and ask God, God, show me what you have for my life. We got all these people dependent on a prophet. Prophet, tell me. Tell me what time I should go to prayer. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. When, when the word says this, my sheep know my voice. Well, listen, you don't know the voice of God if you ain't spending time with him. And if the prophet ain't telling you, well, you need to go pray. These folk just pray, pray, pray. No, I've told, I've been telling people, no, I, I'm not praying. You go pray. But what do you think the Lord said? I don't think nothing. Right. <laughs> you know. You should know. Go talk to God. We are not under no old covenant. What did God tell you? You're not going to let, you're not going to disturb my sleep. You're not going to disturb my peace. You gotta let folk know. You you need to know what God called you to do. There's so many building about the They don't know what God called them to do. And they and they go to, and here they go going to the prophet. The prophet, tell me what you see. <laughs> and maybe that prophet don't know who they are. Right. That's right. Absolutely. Yep. So they come in and, and, and craft the word what they believe. You gotta be so careful. That's why you gotta be so careful of folk, folk on Facebook. Or, you know all these prof, 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 prophetic live services. You got all these folk. It's amazing. Folk can have Bible study. It be five folk. Someone say it's time to prophesy. You get a hundred folk. And then the words be so basic. Yes. Someone told me, say, God said, pray and fast. I said, wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, ain't that, he should be telling the whole body right. to pray and fast. <laughs> yeah. So we got to be careful. And, and, and look at this. Look at this. Glory to God. So, 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 so the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening. And he drank from the brook, and it happened after a while that the brook dried up. God allows the brooks or the provision in your life to dry up simply so you can grow up and not get stuck in being fed from one system of provision. Oh, it's so easy to go off and tell folks, you need to trust God. You need to believe God. <laughs> Until you being put to the test. <laughs> and then the Lord said, no, it, no, I'm going to test you. Now it's your, now, now it's your time. Because right. mm -hmm. it's so easy to tell folks stuff that you ain't doing. And sometimes preachers are the big, are, are the biggest trophy cases of, of easy to get up and, 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 and be in that chair telling folk, believe God, trust God. So something dry up in their life. And what do what what the first thing we do when something dry up? Satan, I bind you. Then you go pull out, pull out the prayer book. I, I bind the spirit of property. I bind it. And the Lord's saying, oh, foolish one. 
ain't no devil got nothing to do with this. I dried it up. Because I realized if I did not dry it up, you would have still been been eating, uh, drinking and eating from the brook, and you would never get your behind up. And you would never trust me, so I dried it up for you. Because you know what? We get lazy in our faith. So that's sometimes in, in, in your walk with God, you see things happen fast, and then it goes slow again. Why? Because if God did everything fast for you, you'd just be sitting back, oh. Right. <laughs> Do it, Jesus. Right. <laughs> Dried up brooks represent a season of change. If Elijah and Simon Peter didn't need their present season in their life to change, then they, then they would not have needed a word from God. Watch this. When the word of the Lord shows up, get ready for change. Watch this. Not, no, 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 no. Not, not, not just changing your condition, but changing your mindset. That is the greatest war that, that preachers are dealing with people is a changing of their mind. Because you can't, you can't renew the minds of the people. It takes the work of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? What's sad? That people are not submitting themselves to the Holy Spirit. You can't come up to, you can't come up to this altar and say, oh, the Lord, the Lord told me to pray for you. We're going to have a prayer line. And in the prayer line, we're going to be praying for all those. We're going to be praying for all those that want their minds renewed. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not say you're going to come up to the altar. Okay, I don't care how powerful Reverend Barbara is. She can't lay hands on you this week and say, receive a renewed mind. So when the word of the Lord comes, it comes to change and it comes to, to rearrange your present. Now, now, now let's keep reading this because I'm almost done. So the, the, the word of the Lord came to him saying, the word of the Lord came to him saying. Now, we, we know what the scripture says. The scripture lets us know that that, that, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. So, so, so listen, even when it comes to, to, to the preaching ministry, a, literally a preacher is only supposed to preach what they've lived out. Not, not, not from what you heard from, from up. Because I'm telling you, I, 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 I've been, oh God, it's been, 20 something years. And I've seen so many facts come and go. We jump on this bandwagon as soon as it is that over, we find something else to jump on. I remember when I was in Bible college and uh, and uh, it was a big thing uh, back then. That, that was back in 96. 97, 98, those years, that it, the big thing was the, the black helicopters. 
And they were supposed to, you know, the, the black helicopters were coming and they were going to do, you know, I forgot. Tell you, tell you, I can't even remember what the, what, what, what the, what the black helicopters were going to do, but, you know, folk got on the bandwagon. And I remember I was at Bible school and, 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 they, and, they, and they perceived they saw a black helicopter. Now, then I remember the time with the laughing and just, you know, folk would just run up, walk up to each other, and they just start laughing for no reason. And I would just sit there. I said, wow, y'all just, I mean, if someone would be preaching the word and, and, be, and they would just bust out just laughing and falling out on the floor and just folk would just roll up. I'm like, wow. I would just sit there. And, and so, so, so. We, 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 we've been mar we, we've married ourselves we must be careful thank you Holy Spirit we must be careful that we don't marry ourselves to methods but marry ourselves to the Word of God because we, we see here in the Word of God when the Word of the Lord came it changed, and the prophet and the word of the Lord said, "Arise, go to Z go to Zarephath." Zarephath means literally. It's what Zarephath means. It means to be refined. Quiet church <laughs> means to be tested. So he sent him from a place. Uh, 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 of, 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 of covenant to a place where he's getting ready to be tested. Because who wants to go to a widow woman? She ain't got nothing. Broke, busted, disgusted. And her and Junebug want to eat their last meal and die. <laughs> But, but he tells her, he says, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow woman there to provide for you. And watch this. This was not a widow that he could pick out. Right. And say, Lord, Lord, bring, bring her to me, because she kind of got a little more, right. you know, <laughs> she ain't broke yet. Right. <laughs> She got a little pension in her, in her hand. But, but he says, see. This word see means literally in the Hebrew, it means to, 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 to see prophetically with purpose and intention. Uh, write this, these two words in. Present vision and prophetic vision. I don't have time to really deal with those. I, I, do, I dealt with those earlier this year at another ministry. But you'll never come into prophetic vision until your present vision is corrected. So, so what do we see about these two men? And I'm almost done. What do we see about these two men? Here we see Simon Peter and God's prophet Elijah. Both of them have encountered dry seasons in their life. For we see with with, with Simon, we, we see with Simon Peter, we, we, we see that the Lord, that he sows his boat, and, and some of the stuff I'm, I'm, I'm passing over, so you have to read it when you go home, and that'll be your, 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 your since you didn't read, some of you didn't read none this week, this would be your, <laughs> this would be your study for the week, your catch up. So you can catch up and go go to Luke five. As a matter of fact, 
I, I forgot to put this out, but my, my books that are here, Reverend Barbara talked about them. Uh, I have some, and they're on sale um, today for $12. That's not twelve mir. That's not twelve miracle money. That, that's twelve dollars. That's that's got to be seen. I'm telling you, some saints do some strange stuff, and you be looking at them like, "Wow." You know, I'm gonna write out you a faith check, but don't you cash this faith check. It's for a thousand dollars, but 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 don't don't cash this faith check till next year. <laughs> Dang, it's next year. Well, wait a minute. Uh, could you make that another year? <laughs> this is a true story. Cluffo Dollar talked about this story about a man that had wrote, had wrote out a, a faith check and gave it to the gave it to the ministry. It was a million dollars. And they, they remember the brother's name. And they, 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 they cashed that million dollar bad check. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they said, this brother here, well, I forgot what the brother's name is. He said who the brother's name, but he said, we do not receive any checks from this brother here <laughs> from this day forward. Folk will write out a, well, I'm just going to believe that. Well, you know what, honey? This is what you do. You keep your faith check at home. <laughs> you decree and declare, and when it come in, <laughs> better yet, when it come in, just, 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 just send cash, <laughs> debit, money order, money order or a certified check. We don't need no faith check because your, your, your check is going to beat your faith. So, so we see here, Simon Peter sows his, boat, sows his boat into the ministry of Jesus. We see that Jesus has a need. He, he's teaching. Oh, my God. He's teaching the word. Now, notice they didn't say he was prophesying the word. They didn't say he was performing signs, miracles. Or what. So he was teaching. He was preaching the word. And there were so many people he needed more room. Now, that's what I'm believing the church gets back to, that we get back to the foundation of preaching and teaching the word. And that's why we don't see the supernatural the way we should see it. Because, number one, we're teaching everything but Jesus. <laughs> we're teaching all this stuff about your, 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 your best life. Right, right. And just, just this life, you're going to walk through life and nothing's going to happen in your life and just everybody love you and when they see you, they just smile. Well, I, went to, I remember one time a pastor, well, she was just being a pest. I was in Houston and I wasn't even thinking about it. But she was pestering me so you want to go to John Osteen's church? You want to go to John Osteen's church? And I kept throwing it off like I didn't want to listen to what she was saying. So we were on the freeway, and she decided, well, I'm going to take it back to John Osteen's church. Oh, my God, we went to John Osteen's church, and um, she wanted me to go on a tour. Oh, my God, I don't want to go on no tour to John Osteen's church. I don't want to go on to John Osteen. We're going to go to John Osteen's church. So, so it's three of us black folk. And so she was trying to get a tour guide. And Bishop Russell, I guarantee you, I thought that was Joel Osteen that was the security guard because the, the guy rose up and he was so nice. He said, just go on. Just, you guys can just go on and just. I said, he's giving me a stranger to all this kind of. <laughs> He's giving us all this liberty. Just go on, just walk around, just. So then we get to the bookstore. Somebody comes from the car. Hi! So good you're here. Just glad you're here. Just go on in there. We go in the sanctuary. 
I said, now we ain't going to walk through this sanctuary, woman of God and man of God. You can forget about me walking through this place. So then I think we went somewhere else and someone popped up again and, hi, how are you doing? I said, wow. I said, you, you guys are just like you're a pastor. I got to say, that must be, that must be part of the contract that you got to, I've been some places and, and, and you walk up and you a stranger. <laughs> so, so, so Simon sows his boat in Jesus' ministry. And so after he's done teaching, watch this. When he had, had, when he had done stop speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now, now I want you to look at that word launch out, launch out. Uh, because what has happened that we see when Jesus finds these, the, 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 these, these fishermen, that they're out washing their nets. So in other words, in the custom of fishing of that day, you would wash your net, and I don't have time to go through the different, that there were different types of, uh, of nets that they would use. I, th I think it's, an, I, I believe I, I put it in my book, the different, there's about three different types of, 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 of nets that they had and, and, and types of fishing that they would do. And so the Bible says that he tells them to launch out into the deep. Someone say launch out. It's very interesting because I found out that this word launch out, it's, it literally means in the Greek means to lead back or to return. Now notice what, notice what, 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 what Simon says. No, notice what Simon says in, in, in this text. He says, when he stopped speaking, he says, launch out to the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon said, answered and said, to him, Master, we've toured all night and we've caught nothing. We've toured all night, we've caught nothing. But he says, launch out into the deep. In other words, if you're going to live, it, if you're going to see the supernatural in your life, you're going to have to go back to the places where you failed. And so many of us, we don't want to deal with the areas where we have failed in or where we're not seeing productivity. Because we want to speak to everything instead of confronting everything. There's some things you can't speak. You have to confront and look at it and say, and see the changes that you need to be made. If you want to lose weight, you can't look. sit in the mirror and say, well, I'm going to lose weight, but let me go get these 12 donuts and, 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 and at noon, I'm going to have a, 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 a 12 slices of pizza with, 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 with two liters of Pepsi and at dinner, well, I'm going to have 50 barbecue wings. You have to go back to the places where you felt God did not tell, Jesus did not tell Peter. Now watch this, he did not tell Peter. He did not tell Peter. Oh, Peter, just, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just, you just going out there. And, and all the fish you need just going to show up. He says, go back to where you failed at. That's a word for someone. Go back to where you have failed at. You just can't speak over every. every you, you can't ignore everything and just speak in tongues. And, <laughs> you you got to look at that thing and say, now, Lord, I, this, this area has been unproductive. What do I need to do to see productivity? 
What do I need to do? Because this ain't got to do nothing with no devil. This has something to do on my part. Where's the failure that I need to come up in? Watch this. Where's the area where I need adjustment and correction in? Because we don't we don't see that as supernatural. We don't see we don't see correction from God as supernatural. We don't see adjustment from God as see we say we say we say them words that's like cuss words in the body. You say correction and adjustment, and, and you say dry up. Oh no, the, the oh God, this ain't the season for that. This is twenty twenty. <laughs> You got to go back to those areas and watch Peter. Watch this, because this is also part of the supernatural. But, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. You've got to be honest about your presence. He's honest. He says, Master, we've, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. We've toiled all night. We worked so hard but we're not seeing productivity and we've been doing it at the right time. We've done everything right because Peter is a master fisherman. He's not no novice. Got to get all that pride and all that arrogance and all that stuff out of you. And that's why you need to spend time alone with God. So you can spend time with and ask God, God, show me me. See, 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 see the scripture we don't read no more, but it's in the Bible. James 1.25, it talks about how the word is a mirror. And when we get in this word, it's going to show you who you really are. And it's going to show you the areas you need to come up in. Because I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how, how, how well you speak in tongues. I don't care how well, 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 well you lay hands on the sick. I don't care how well you can prophesy. There, uh, everyone in here has some level of correction they need. It has nothing to do with how long you've been saved. Because I came from a church that they were like that. They, they thought after so many years, you, you, were, you, you were no longer considered corrected. They thought after a while, you know, because they've been, they've, been, they've been in the way a long time. Huh? Here they come out. We're the correctors. We tell you what to do. Because, child, I've been in the way. I've been. I, I've been. In the, uh, I've been in the way for for twenty five. I've been for fifty years for you, for your mama got got here. So, master, we've toiled all night and we've caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word, nevertheless, at your word, I'm going to let down the net. Now, I want, to, I want to see this last point, and then I'm going to pray for you, and then we're going home. <laughs> so they signal their partners. Oh, no, no, verse 6. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Now, watch this. It was so much that the one net that he took could not bear the increase. So it began to tear. It began to tear so that he had to call other partners. He had to call other, other fishermen to come and help him. Because he saw fruit
but he was losing it because of his vision. Because the Lord gave him word about nets, but he just saw a net. So this season, God's dealing with our vision, how we see things, how we perceive the word. How we look at the word, how when it's being spoken to us, how, how do we see the word that's being spoken to us? Because it's all right to rejoice when we get a word, but if we're not becoming what we hear, you'll become frustrated. There's a lot of frustrated Christians. Why? Because they got, they, got, they got a prophetic word, but, but they see no fruit. They, see no, they, they, they don't see any manifestation. And why they don't see any manifestation? Because they're not doing it. They're not, they, they don't want to step out on the word. They don't want to be challenged in the word. They don't want that. They want everything to come just because God said. But Father, we thank you. And we honor you. And we give you the praise. And we give you the glory. For all the things that you've done. And what you're going to do these next three days. Father, we thank you and we honor you in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Just lift those hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Just lift those hands to the Lord. Lift those hands to the Lord. These next 15 minutes, lift your hands to the Lord. You know, brother, I don't even know who you are, but I see a evangelistic grace upon your life. And God's going to use you to win many souls to the kingdom of God. And, and, I, and I saw the cloak of evangelists upon your life. And God said, not only, will you be, only, not only will you be an evangelist, but I saw healing coming from you. I saw the gift of healing being stirred up in you. Even in this meeting, as you're here, God is stirring up the healing grace upon your life, says the Spirit of the Lord. So, Father, we seal this word to my brother in Jesus' name now. We seal it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ooh. And, Father, I just hear the word of the Lord to your son and your daughter tonight that the rain is coming. The rain is coming. They've plowed, they plowed, they plowed to the point that sometimes they haven't seen the results they want, have wanted to see. But I hear God say to tell you, man and woman of God, that the rain is coming and there's a rain. And the Lord said, this rain, you won't need, you don't need an umbrella because he wants every raindrop of blessing and overflow to flow over your life, said the Spirit of the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord says to you, to the both of you tonight, the Spirit of the Lord would even say to you that, uh, that, that, that mm, I'm adding years to your life. I'm adding years to both of your lives, said the Lord, because the work that I have for you to do, God says, I'm, I am literally turning back the pages and I'm taking you back to the beginning, said the Lord, and I'm calling you to rebuild again, said the Lord. And the Lord says to tell you that, 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 that even uh, I'm going to send in the right people, the right people. And God said, they're going to be stable people. You've had people uh, that you've ministered to, and they've not been, been committed the way how you guys have been committed. But God said, that season is changing now. Receive it now, son and daughter. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, stop worrying. Because there's cares. I, I saw cares and you just had a bunch of cares that you've been carrying. But God says today, drop those cares at my feet because I'm going to begin to deal with them, said the Lord. And the Lord says to you, even this day, he's bringing healing to some things that happened to you even 30 years ago. The Lord says, receive your healing this day for that. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm.
man or woman of God. The Lord says, I have sent thee here even to refresh thee and to send thee back with more grace and more power for the assignment that I've given you, said the Lord. And the Lord says today that he, re he, he is releasing a fresh wind of provision and even a different group of people. For even some of those that have been in your midst have been those that have caused the greatest war in the ministry, said the Lord. But the Lord says to tell you in this season that I'm sending away some that I may bring in the new, said the Lord. And God said it will look like at the time that it's like we have nobody. It's like God sweeped out the whole ministry, but God said, let me do what I'm going to do because God said, I'm going to take the ministry to a new place. And God says, woman, man and woman of God, and even to you, woman of God, because I saw the darts coming more to you than to your husband. But, uh, but, I, I, but I hear God says, I'm bringing healing. I'm bringing healing, emo some, some emotional healing to you in this season, woman of God. Because so many people, so many people have wounded you, and, and, and God said they, they they have said things that literally devastated you, people that you've helped and people that you've sown into. But God said this is a season that I'm bringing healing, I'm bringing wholeness to you, said the Lord. The Lord says to tell you, yeah, I'm going to bless the ministry with property, I'm going to bless the ministry with land I'm, for those things that I've declared and promised, said the Lord. They will surely come to pass, said the Lord. So the Lord says, know that when you go back home things are going to be different and I God says to tell you multicultural multicultural I hear God say multicultural multicultural a multicultural people shall you lead said the Lord a multicultural people you shall lead said the Lord and they shall come said the Lord and they shall come from strange places and they shall come from different places said the Lord and they'll come broken they'll come abused they'll come hurt but God says he's, he's going to use the both of you to bring healing deliverance and breakthrough says the word of the Lord to you so no the Lord says to tell you even as you're going home even as when you go back home and drive back home you're going to see changes ha Kosha Masi Kota you're going to see the changes that you've been believing God for but don't be afraid when some of the ones that were dear to you walk away because those that walk away really were not connected to you. They're really not in covenant to what I put inside of you. Mm. So Father, we say this word to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift those hands, people of God. Lift those hands. Father, we just bless. I see a blanket of the Holy Spirit. Really? Yeah. So, Father, we just seal this word to your people. We bless them in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Back in the hands of Reverend Barbara. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, God is good. Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Um, I'm going to pray for um, uh, Pastor Renee because uh, the devil's attacked her with this uh, sniffle and stuff. Uh, if anybody else needs healing tonight, you know, we're going to do healing school tomorrow starting at noon and then at 730 again. But if you want to be prayed for before you go tonight, I'll uh, pray for you. We'll just wind this up uh, with a very simple uh Come on up and I'll pray for you. I just need to lay hands on you or minister as the Lord leads.
school and miracle service tell your friends bring the sick bring prayer cloths you want prayed for uh, bring articles of clothing we'll line the altar up uh, with things so that we can all take the healing anointing uh, with us and there'll be impartation to for those of you who um, want to have the power of God in your life to heal the sick so God wants you to have that amen so we'll do all of those things tomorrow starting at 12 noon and then when the night service is 7 30 and I'll do both of those services amen praise God father we thank you for this day we thank you for this people this is the day you've made for us to rejoice and we are glad in it Lord we are glad in this day so we thank you for what you've done for us tonight, how you've taught us, blessed us, imparted to us, spoken to us, and set us free. And we give you all glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and praise God. Amen. We are dismissed for the night. Amen.